Chapter 31 Deal with you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 31 Zhou Xian Mr. Chen couldn't help sighing in his heart, this girl looks young, but she is an extremely intelligent person, she actually understood his intentions and was unwilling to take the bait. The kindness he sent to the door, but the other party refused to accept it, there is no way. After the medicinal materials were prepared, the little guy was about to wrap them up. Xie Jiwei said, wait a minute, and she came forward to check them one by one. The boys waited aside, seeing such meticulous people for the first time, although they were admirable, but in the end it was because they didn't trust their work, they looked at each other in dismay, and they were all a little worried. Although the medicated diet recipe is brilliant, no one would think that it was written by Xie Jiwei. A ten-dot-year-dot-old girl, even if she studied medicine in her mother's womb, at this age, it is already very important to be able to prescribe a prescription for diarrhea and cold. Only Dr. Chen can see the brilliance of this medicinal recipe, and these little fellows can't understand it. Xie Jiwei twisted out a lobelia from one of the packs of medicine, held it up and looked carefully, is this medicine wrong? Lobelia is used as medicine with dried whole herb, which does not need to be processed. It is pungent and flat in nature, and has the heart, small intestine and lung meridians. This is Lobelia, girl, don't worry, we have opened Chun Tang for 10 or 20 years, and we have never sold fake medicines. Dr. Chen leaned up to take a look at Lobelia, wishing to pat his chest to assure him. Then can you add another Lobelia for me? That's no problem, but you can't add or subtract medicines in a pack. That's okay, I'll just take this plant out. Xie Jiwei asked for a piece of paper by the way, and carefully wrapped the lobelia plant. In the room, Su Liang heard the commotion outside, he saw Xiao Sun's complexion getting worse and worse, couldn't help it, moved his lips, and asked in a breathy voice, what's wrong? Xiao Sun didn't speak, outside, Xie Jiwei had already ordered the maid to pay the bill. After the settlement was completed, Xiao Chen didn't notice anything, Xiao Sun couldn't help it. Although he didn't deal with this girl many times, he knew that she was not a random person, on the contrary, she was smart and cunning. Xiao Sun came out from inside, he glanced at the Bambianlian in Xie Jiwei's hand, and asked, Miss Xie, do you dare to ask what's wrong with this medicine? Xie Jiwei glanced at him, like a cat stealing fish, smiled happily, but also with malicious intentions, it's better for the county prince not to know, if you know, I'm afraid you will be so angry that you won't be able to sleep well. Smelly girl, what's going on? I haven't settled with you yet. What did you say when you checked my pulse just now? You said I have a slippery pulse. Humph, how can a man be pregnant? When Su Liang saw Xie Jiwei, he was so angry that smoke came out of his seven orifices, how could he remember how he promised Xiao Sun just now? There is no man in the world who goes to a girl's house to touch porcelain. Oh, so you are a man. My eldest sister misread it and thought you were a woman. She saw you lying on the ground when she didn't agree with you, so I gave you a doctor. I have a happy pulse. Xie Jiwei rushed forward, stopped Xie Jiwei behind her, and prevented Su Liang from bumping into the eldest sister. Su Liang is like a fighting cock. He wants to argue with Xie Jiwei, Xiao Sun raised his hand to stop him, if you say one more word, I will get thee out of here. Ga. Su Liang swallowed the words that came to his lips. He dare not. Xiao Sun continued to stare at the medicinal materials in Xie Jiwei's hands, Xie Jiwei only felt that God has such eyes, she held up a lobelia, and shook it in front of Xiao Sun, unfortunately, the prince of the county, this is actually a golden green ice lotus. Jinqing ice lotus and lobelia are similar when they are not dried, but ordinary doctors can distinguish them because the leaves of Jinqing ice lotus have a golden outline. But after drying, the color turned dark brown, and the gold border also changed color, hidden in the brown, and it was extremely difficult to distinguish it again. But it is not impossible, the original golden outline is darker in color than the leaf surface, and it cannot be seen unless you look closely. At this time, after Xie Jiwei's reminder, 
Dr. Chen had already seen that this was indeed a golden green ice lotus. His face suddenly became ugly, and beads of sweat oozed from the corner of his forehead. Golden green ice lotus detoxifies hundreds of poisons, and most importantly, golden green ice lotus is the main medicine for treating seven star goo poison. If the father knew that he sold the Jin Qing Binglian as Lobelia, and the buyer repeatedly reminded him that he was not vigilant, he would be beaten to death by his father. Xia Jiwei smiled. She obviously didn't intend to return it. She put away the medicinal materials, wiped her hands with a handkerchief, and was about to leave when Xiao Sun asked, Miss, can you tell me what poison Jinking Binglian can detoxify? Xia Jiwei is alert again, if she says she can detoxify the seven dot star poison, will Xiao Sun kill her to silence her? And with Xia Jiwei's flash of effort, Xiao Sun's eyes sank. Not many people know about the seven dot star goo poison in his body, but Xia Jiwei actually knows. So, how could she know about the seven dot star goo poison in Xiao Sun's body? Threatening Xiao Sun with this incident made Xia Jiwei want to die. In fact, if this happened to anyone other than Xiao Sun, Xia Jiwei could easily handle it, or, if Xia Jiwei hadn't cooperated with Xiao Sun in the previous life and didn't know Xiao Sun's character, she wouldn't be like this nervous. Who is Xiao Sun? Counting exhaustive strategies, wisdom is close to demon. Is it too late to return it to Xiao Sun? Although she had no intention of occupying this Jinqing Ice Lotus, she was even ecstatic when she found this Jinqing Ice Lotus. Golden Green Ice Lotus grows on the top of snow-capped alpine peaks. It is an annual herbaceous plant. In the previous life, it was because of the lack of such a blind medicine that Xiao Sun couldn't get rid of the seven dot star goo poison until the end. And she once asked God silently in her heart, if there is an afterlife, how should she repay Xiao Sun? It was Xiao Sun who avenged her, and Xie's family was destroyed. Perhaps it was her silent prayer that moved the heavens, Xie Jiwei never expected that she would get the golden green ice lotus so easily. Xiao Sun's poison has been cured. If she can help Xiao Sun detoxify the seven star goo poison, she will not owe Xiao Sun anything. From then on, this young man who runs proudly on a steed, tramples on falling flowers, and whips his whip straight on a chariot of clouds, can live unscrupulously. He is still a young man when he returns from a thousand sails with a sword and wine. Facing Xiao Sun's eyes, Xia Jiwei realized that he was still too naive, thinking everything too simply. Xiao Sun is not a human being. Xiao Sun smiled slightly, watching Xia Jiwei's dilemma with great interest. Xia Jiwei took a deep breath, now, she has no choice but to deal with Xiao Sun. Now that the Jin Qing Binglian is in his hands, unless Xiao Sun doesn't want this life anymore, he shouldn't dare to take a shot at him easily. Xiao Sun didn't want others to know that he had been poisoned by the seven dot star poison, and if he lost his life because of the golden green ice lotus, once he was traced, the seven dot star poison would not be concealed. Save your life for the time being, and for the rest, you can only plan slowly later. Golden green ice lotus detoxes hundreds of poisons. Xia Ji smiled, of course, it doesn't have to be the golden green ice lotus. As far as I know, Huang Jingji has such effects. Although Huang Jingji was less effective in detoxifying the seven dot star goo poison than Jinking Binglian, Huang Jingji had no problem at all in detoxifying other common poisons. There is one. Xiao Sun smiled, now, he is really sure that Xia Jiwei should know that he was poisoned by the seven dot star poison, he is also curious, how did she know? As far as he knows, Chui Sangpu has not been to Beijing in recent years. Even if he goes to Beijing, with Chui Sangpu's character, he will never tell Xia Jiwei about his being poisoned by the seven dot star poison. She is too young, only ten years old. She is smart, and she knows how to use Huang Jingji to divert people's attention, but this little trick is really not enough for him. Xia Jiwei also knows that it's not enough to watch, right now, it's wrong to say too much. 
After the boys of Huichun Hall wrapped up the medicinal materials, she asked CMO to pick up the medicinal materials and leave quickly. Seeing Xia Jiwei leave, little Dr. Chen became anxious and wanted to catch up, but Xiao Sun raised his hand to stop him, no problem. He was sure that Xia Jiwei knew that he wanted Jin Qing Binglian, so Xia Jiwei would definitely preserve this herb for him. The First Update End of this chapter Chapter 32 Relic You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 32 Relic There were two incidents related to Xiao Sun one after another, and Xia Jiwei lost all interest no matter how good he was. Xia Jiwei blamed herself endlessly. If she hadn't been touched by Su Yang, she wouldn't have let her big sister fall into such a dangerous situation. She also didn't expect that such a well-born man, Prince Chen, is completely a Shura. She is not stupid, how could she not see that Prince Chen is eyeing big sister? That person's eyes are beautiful, but those eyes are so scary, who would dare to look at them? Dot really blinded that face for nothing. The two of them were not very interested. After a short walk, Xia Jiwei saw an ink shop called Yaidich and walked in. What does big sister want to buy? Xia Jiwei wanted to say, what big sister wants to buy, she will pay for it. My fifth brother is about to be enlightened, I want to buy some pens, ink, paper and ink stone for my fifth brother. The shopkeeper saw that the two girls were not ordinary people, so he hurriedly came forward, girl, we have good ink that just came in from the south, show it to the two girls. Xiao Er hurriedly brought over a tray of various inks. Xia Jiwei looked at them one by one and smelled the fragrance of the inks. The inks could neither be bad nor too good. She chose two pieces of high dot quality lamp black inks. The fragrance of the ink is elegant and light, the ink is black and shiny, the quality of the ink is thin and light, and there are two lion heads carved on it, children should like it very much. Young lady has a good eye. This is Huizhou lamp black ink, and there is always good ink there. There is also a she ink stone here. You might as well take a look. Good lamp black ink is not cheap. The girl bought it for two yuan. The shopkeeper was happy when she saw it, and quickly took out a piece of expensive Songduan ink stone. This pine section ink stone is about the size of an adult's palm, shaped like a pine section, and has a texture like silk, giving people a crystal clear, simple and elegant beauty. She stone has always had the eight virtues of hardness, moistness, softness, health, fineness, smoothness, cleanliness, and beauty. Among the four famous ink stones, Xia Jiwei happens to like Shi ink stone very much. Xia Jiwei chose Qingxin paper again, a set of Xianzhou Ziheo. It costs more than five tails of silver in total. Xia Jiwei took a fancy to a dragon tail ink stone, and asked for a tail of silver, Xia Jiwei simply bought it and gave it to her. Big sister, I have a good set of pen, ink, paper and ink stone in my room. After I go back, send it to my fifth brother to congratulate my fifth brother on his enlightenment. Xia Ji smiled and said, he is the joy of enlightenment today. I don't know if he will find that reading is a hard job in a few days, and he will feel happy. Xia Jiwei imagined the wrinkled little face of the fifth brother, sitting under the window imitating the distressed appearance, and couldn't help laughing, since ancient times, people have suffered from hardships, and only then can they become masters. If I am free in the future, I will also urge my fifth younger brother to study hard and strive for an early title on the gold list. This is a bit far dot fetched, Xia Jiwei thought that the second younger sister has always kept her word, Fang Jing's temperament must have been inherited from her grandfather, and the fifth younger brother will suffer a lot in the future, she smiled, okay. Fifth younger brother will be very happy when he finds out. Happy. Bought the favorite pen, ink, paper and ink stone, Xia Jiwei and Xia Jiwei felt better. Xia Jiwei took a lot of banknotes to go shopping, if he didn't buy more things, he would feel sorry for himself, so the two went to Jingxiafang and Jutsue Pavilion together. Jutsue Pavilion is the newly opened silver building from the south introduced by Yuan. 
Because the jewelry sold is novel and exquisite, the business is extremely hot. I don't even know when another bank opened in the capital. I also heard from my mother today. Seeing people coming in and out at the door, those who went in were full of expectations, and those who came out looked satisfied. The two sisters Xia Jiwei were also infected, and felt lucky to be here. Otherwise, I don't know how many exquisite jewelry I missed. There is no girl who does not love beauty. The two sisters were welcomed in by the waiter in the shop, and there was a burst of clothing and temples in the lobby on the first floor, which gave Xia Jiwei the illusion that all the noble ladies in the capital were gathered here. Turning around, the two sisters didn't see anyone they were attracted to, so they went up to the second floor under the leadership of the waiter. There are a little less people on the second floor, and there is a circle of counters. The jewelry placed in the counters is of a higher grade than that downstairs. At one end of the lobby, there are some private rooms for guests to rest and discuss business. The two walked around the counter and saw several pieces of jewelry. The waiter arranged for someone to pick them up, and at the same time led the sisters to the private room, please sit inside for a while, girls, and have some tea. What do you want? The jewelry will be delivered immediately. The two of them were not in a hurry, and they walked over hand in hand. There was a thumping sound on the stairs, and a slightly familiar voice came, I didn't see anything good. It's not as good as the one I'm wearing on my head. A vermilion hairpin is pretty. Xia Jiwei turned his head, and a girl in a red dress came up slowly, her hand rested on the red hairpin on the sideburns, the red hairpin was as red as fire, and three petaled flowers were lined up side by side, the petals were in the shape of a dawn moon, slightly curved exposing the fine stamens, slowly like life, seems to be able to smell the fragrance of flowers. Fusang in the East Pole, Ruashu in the West Pole, Shiha has not been raised, how bright is it? Xia Jiwei's hands clenched into fists unconsciously, his whole body tensed up, staring at the Romaziwa Zhuchai on the girl's head. As if feeling Xia Jiwei's sharp gaze, the girl looked up in surprise, raised her chin slightly, pursed her lips slightly, and showed a provocative smile, so it's Miss Ye's family, I'm so sorry, Miss Ye, my lady this red hairpin on my head is not for sale. The girl who came up with the girl was wearing a two-dot color tapestry skirt with a hundred flowers and roses and purple, and a phoenix on a light yellow background wearing a two-dot color brocade and moon dress with hundreds of flowers. On her head was a flying swallow hairpin with eight treasures and beads her footsteps swayed slightly, and upon hearing this, she couldn't help but burst out laughing, looking at Xia Jiwei with obvious disdain. The girl in red is Xue Wanchuang, the second daughter of the Xue family, born of the Pang family. The girl who was with her was also known to Xia Jiwei, an old acquaintance from the previous life, and she followed Xiao Lingyi, the owner of Huayang County in the Wangfu. Xia Jiwei was furious immediately, what happened today, why did I meet all these spoilers? Xia Jiwei gave her a hand, and walked forward by himself, Miss Shui, I really want this red hairpin on your head, because it is my mother's dowry in her relic. Shui Wanshuang's eyes were wide open, and her whole body was shaking with anger. She seemed to see everyone on the second floor looking at her, impossible. Impossible. Xia Jiwei sneered, dared to ask Miss Shui Er, where did this red hairpin on your head come from? What's its name? Xia Jiwei's voice was not loud, but it was definitely not low. When she said that the red hairpin on Xue Wanshuang's head was her mother's relic, everyone was shocked. Many people in the private room came out, pretending to look at the jewelry on the counter, he pricked up his ears to listen to the movement here. Xia Jiwei thought of something, her face was particularly ugly, she stared at Zhu Chai on Xue Wanshuang's head, furious. It is conceivable how the ants' relics ended up on Xue Wanchuang's head. Xue Wanqing has lived in Xie's family for nearly four years. Relying on her grandmother's favor, she has often had conflicts with the girls of Xie's family in these years. Ask for a ticket, collect it. End of this chapter. Chapter 33 Zhu Chai You are listening at novelfull.audio 
Chapter 33 Zhu Chai Xiao Lingyi looked at the red hairpin on Shui Wanshuang's head in shock. It was the first time she saw Shui Wanshuang wearing this red hairpin, and she was really amazed at the first sight. These three vermilion flowers were carved out of a top dot quality red jadeite, is an extremely rare coxcomb red, the color is appropriate in shades, crystal clear, and there is no variegated color. Xiao Lingyi was still thinking, how could the Shue family have such treasures? Although the Shue family still has the title of Uncle Ning Yuan, this title was acquired by the first generation of Uncle Ning Yuan. The current uncle of the Shue family, Shue Shipang, is a man who only knows how to fight and walk dogs. When his first wife died, he almost went to court with the Xie family for the dowry of his first wife. In the most glorious period of the Shue family, it was impossible to get a Zhu Chai of this quality, let alone now that they are so poor that they are about to become pants. Xiao Lingyi couldn't help but glanced at Xue Wanchuang's head, unable to hide her envy. But no matter what, Xue Wanchuang and her are cousins, and Xia Jiwei humiliated Xue Wanchuang in front of everyone, and also shamed her. Miss Xie, no matter where this Zhu Chai came from, it has nothing to do with you. Zhu Chai is Zhu Chai, so what is the name? It's not a person, and parents have to help choose the name. Xie Jiwei glanced at Xiao Lingyi, and walked forward step by step. She stopped three steps away from Shui Wanshuang, Miss Shui Er, the name of this red hairpin on my mother's dowry list is Ruomaziwa, taken from Songs of the Chu Tianwen in She Has Unexplored, Ruohua Haguang. There is only one flower in the world. There is a word Chui on the back of the flower in the middle. Steal my mother's Zhu Chai and give it to your people probably never told you that all of my mother's jewelry is unique, with the Chui family's inscription on it. The entire second floor of Jutsue Pavilion was completely silent. Everyone was staring at the red hairpin on Shui Wanchuang's head at this moment. A little bit of bright yellow, following Shui Wanchuang's trembling body, trembling slightly, the fragrance of flowers seemed to overflow and spread between heaven and earth. Shui Wanchuang is not very beautiful, the light of Ruomu Jihua added three points of color to her originally plain face. Xie Jiehui rushed up, she pulled off the red hairpin on Shui Wanchuang's head, turned it over, and sure enough, she saw that on the back of the second flower, there was a word, Chui, carved as thin as a strand of hair, because the red jadeite was crystal clear, the word, Chui, is not difficult to see. Several noble ladies who were watching the fun in the lobby on the second floor also quickly gathered around. After seeing it with sharp eyes, they all looked at Shui Wanchuang in surprise, as if the steel that Xie Jiwei said was Shui Wanchuang. Everyone was discussing, although the voice was small, it did not prevent people on the second floor from hearing it. Those who didn't have a chance to get along no longer doubted that this must really be one of Chui's dowry back then. How could it be worn on Shui Wanchuang's head? It was discovered by Xie Jiwei. This is really a good show. Is the Shui family poor and crazy? It's not shameful to wear the dowry of someone's dead mother on her head and flaunt it in the market. Seeing that the situation was not good, although Xiao Lingyi felt ashamed, she had to think of a way to save one or two, and hurriedly asked, Cousin Shuang, since this Zhu Chai belongs to Miss Xie, why did it come to you? Shui Wanchuang is not a fool, and under the sudden turn of the situation, she also knew that it was the most sensible move to get rid of herself at this time, she shed tears, and said softly and timidly, yes, it was given to me by my eldest sister, I how do you know how this Zhu Chai came about? It must have been given to her by the elders of the Xie family. You are talking nonsense. Since this Zhu Chai belongs to my Aunt Chui, and since my Aunt Chui is gone, her dowry must be sealed and will be given to my eldest sister in the future. How could the elders of the Xia family move it, let alone give it to her? Give it to Cousin Qin. Xia Zhihui said angrily. This means that Shui Wanqing stole Mrs. Xianxia's dowry. If this is the case, what good reputation do the girls of her Shui family have? Shui Wanchuan would never admit to death. I heard that the old lady of your mansion loves my eldest sister very much, more than her own granddaughter. 
she took my eldest sister to your mansion to raise her personally. If this is the case, there is no need to give her the dowry. Why not? Shui Wanshuang wiped away her tears, and when she saw Xie Jiehui's eyes widen with anger, she felt that she had finally moved back to the game. Second Miss Shui, you can eat whatever you want, but you can't talk casually. You say that my grandmother gave this red hairpin to my cousin Qin. What evidence do you have? Xie Jiwei said calmly. Do Viko when she saw this red hairpin, she already had a plan in mind. After she deliberately raised her mother's dowry in front of her grandfather that day, her grandmother didn't say anything. If it wasn't for her previous life, she would not have known that the dowry left by her mother was so rich that it turned out to be Shui Wanqing's capital to deal with her in the end. When she saw her mother's dowry list later, she was so angry that her liver hurt. But at that time, the Xie family was gone, and she was in the cold palace, and she could only watch Shui Wanqing wear her mother's dowry every day, accepting congratulations and praises from wives inside and outside. She has seen this red hairpin on Shui Wanqing's head, Ruohua, the flower of Ruomu, her mother's boudoir name is Ruohua. It is said that the flower of Ruomu was designed and drawn by the grandfather himself, carved by himself, and given to the mother as a gift. Xie Jiwei took Ruoma Ziwa from Xie Jiwei's hand, she looked over and over, her eyes gradually became hot and humid, somehow, is mother helping her. Knowing that she wants to get back her mother's dowry, so, watching from the sky, is she helping her with this Ruoma flower? What about the previous life? In the previous life, mother saw her so stupid, so stupid in the sky, was she sad? Of course I have evidence. My elder sister said it herself, saying that this Zhu Chai was given to her by her grandmother. Shui Wanchuang was anxious, and said without hesitation. Xie Jiwei nodded, if that's the case, then it's not Miss Shui Er's fault. However, my Xie family has yet to verify this matter. In the future, if it is as Miss Shui Er said, I will come to the door to tell Shui Er sorry girl. After all, if this Ruoma flower was really given to Shui Er by Miss Shui, and Xie Jiwei is sure that this Ruoma flower must have been given to Shui Wanqing by Mrs. Feng, then it would be the Xie family's own business, which would implicate Shui Wanqing instead. Second girl. Xie Jiwei took advantage of the situation today, and he really wanted to make things worse, so as to put pressure on Feng and get back his mother's dowry. At that time, she doesn't mind going to Shui's house. Besides apologizing to second Miss Shui for what happened today, she has other purposes. Good show seeing this, what are these ladies and ladies not clear about? Everyone looked at Xie Jiwei with pity. If he was a real grandmother, would he be greedy for his granddaughter's dowry? I'm afraid, not only won't it, but will subsidize some. Back then, Uncle Xie's family was not a good man, he abandoned his pen and joined the army, and went to the frontier. What's the story in it? Shui Wanchuang snorted coldly, pulled Xiao Lingyi to turn around, and ran downstairs thumping, with a vicious dog chasing behind her. She was very annoyed, she had never been so embarrassing when she grew up so big, she wanted to go back and question Shui Wanqing, is Shui's family so poor? Are you so poor that you want to covet other people's mother's dowry? The Xie family is still a big family, ah. Xie Jiwei wanted to tear off her face and throw it on the ground. She stared at Zhu Chai in Xie Jiwei's hand, thinking of that possibility, felt ashamed, but also felt very sorry for her elder sister. Does her mother have any part in embezzling Aunt Chui's dowry? The First Update End of this chapter Chapter 34 Slap in the face you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 34 Slap, Second Sister, No matter what the truth of the matter is, this matter has nothing to do with you. In the carriage, Xie Jiwei held Xie Jiwei's hand and said calmly, her eyes were full of pity. However, in this world, if a person can decide what kind of person he is, it is already very remarkable, but he cannot decide what kind of person the people around him are. Big Sister Xie Jiwei held Xie Jiwei's hand tightly. 
She looked into the eyes of the big sister, and wanted to ask if the big sister knew it, and wanted to ask if her mother had one, but she didn't dare. The words came to his lips, and finally swallowed them. Xie Jiwei also knew what Xie Jiwei wanted to ask, even if Xie Jiwei asked, she couldn't say anything. The carriage entered the gate of E, and the maids and maids in the sisters' room were already waiting to welcome the sisters back to the yard. Xie Jiwei went to Funyuan first, and her mother and younger brother must be waiting for her when she goes out this time. Mei Mei, come quickly, your father has sent a letter. When Xie Jiwei heard this, he was overjoyed, hurried over, took the letter in his mother's hand, looked at his father's familiar handwriting, Xie Jiwei's hands were shaking, and tears rolled in his eyes. In the letter, Dad said that he had received the letter from his mother last time, saying that everything was fine in the frontier, and asked how she and her brother were doing. Although the letter was very short, his father's longing for her and her younger brother was clearly on the paper. Xie Jiwei read the letter back and forth three times before returning it to her mother. She saw her mother folded the letter carefully and put it away. She cherished it most of all. Thinking of her father's betrayal of her mother in the future, her heart felt like a stabbing knife. Pain. Sister, sister, you are finally back. In the room, Xie Mingxi, who hoped that his sister would go in and see him, couldn't bear it anymore, ran out of the room in a hurry, hugged Xie Jiwei's waist and started jumping, Sister, where did you buy me? Xie Jiwei's mood jumped for joy in an instant, and she hugged her brother's soft body with her arms around her, Brother Xi, my sister taught you how to write, when you can write, write a letter to daddy and ask daddy to come back soon, okay? Okay, my sister taught me riding and archery. When I'm done with riding and archery, I'm going to the frontier to fight bad guys with my father. Xie Jiwei thought, in the previous life, dad would not come back until next year. It's almost the end of the new year, and Bai Meiji is coming to join the old lady soon. Okay. Xie Jiwei gestured, asking ZMO to bring over the pens, inks, papers and inkstones she bought for her younger brother, as well as food, and immediately the room was filled with the smell of sweet and fragrant snacks. Xie Jiwei was hungry, and Xie Mingxi had already climbed onto the Kong to fiddle with presents. Yuan Shi hurriedly ordered the maids to start preparing meals, is Mei Mei hungry? Why didn't you come back from eating outside? I heard that Pan Lu pushed me away again there are quite a few dishes. Speaking of Pan Lu's dishes, Yuan's mouth is almost watering, there are eight dot treasure bamboo fungus with crab meat, gourd abalone, and lotus meat pie. I've never eaten them. Pan Lu's fried meat is very delicious. Cut the mutton into thin slices, stir. Fry in hot oil, after smelling the aroma of the meat, add wine, pepper, and green onions and stir. Fry until fragrant. This season, it is the best to eat Bushia Gong. Never tire of eating. Xie Ji Xiaoguang was drooling as she listened, thinking to herself, she is such a wonderful stepmother. If it wasn't for being in Xie's house and having no control over many things, my mother must be a big eater who eats all over the capital. Although Mrs. Yuan is in the inner house, she knows all about the newly opened silver shop and the new dishes in the restaurant. If you have time, my mother will take me and my brother to eat together. What's the point of eating alone? Yuan's eyes lit up, Mei Mei can go whenever she wants, I'm always free. Xie Ji smiled slightly. Okay, okay. Xie Mingxi clapped his hands and said, Sister, when can I go out? Since you have already started studying, naturally you have to wait for Xiu Mu before you can go out. Xie Mingxi's face collapsed in an instant, Xie Jiwei couldn't help laughing, Brother she doesn't want my sister to be the happiest sister in the capital so soon, of course not. I must study hard and make all the older sisters envious of my older sister. Well, my sister is looking forward to it. Xie Jiwei stroked his younger brother's hair and asked, Did you drink your medicine today? Drink well, if you don't believe me, ask Jun Yang. After Lian Yang and Chiohan were sold, Yuan Shi reselect Xie Mingxi's nanny and maid. Jun Yang is about 20 years old, wearing a blue satin toothpick, 
a lotus dot-colored satin skirt, a square face, her hair in a bun at the back of her head, and a silver dot-gilt chiseled flower flat square, looking simple and honest. Xie Jiwei took a look at her, seeing her pure eyes, he also felt relieved. Miss, the fifth young master didn't complain of suffering after drinking the medicine today. Jun Yang laughed. Xie Jiwei hugged his younger brother, that's great, after dinner, let's take a nap, and my sister will teach you how to write, okay? Okay. Xie Mingxi tasted a bit of the dim sum brought back by Xie Jiwei, and then pinched a piece of lion candy and stuffed it into Yuan's mouth, Mother, is it delicious? My sister bought it for me. He was so loud. Delicious. Yuan sure looked at the siblings with joy in her heart. The dishes on the table were all Xie Jiwei's favorites. During the dinner, Yuan kept picking up dishes for the siblings. After a meal, she herself didn't eat much. Fuyin Courtyard was full of fun, and in Chunhui Hall, Nanny Yu was telling the old lady what she had heard outside, Second Miss personally pulled the red hairpin from Second Miss Shui's head, and many girls came to see it at that time. There is indeed a word, Chui, on it. The girl from Zhao Yuan Weilong's family, the girl from Su Yuxiu's family, and the girl from Jian Hanlin's family have all seen it with their own eyes. Now it is rumored that the first wife why did my dowry go to Shui's house? Although Nanny Yu didn't say it, Mrs. Fong could also imagine, how else could she get to Shui's house? Shui Wanshuang said that the red hairpin was given by Miss Shui. Pick some jewelry from my jewelry box, and go to Shui's house quickly. Fong Shi was shaking with anger, but at this time, it was not the time for her to settle accounts with Xie Ji Wei, my sister Qing doesn't know yet. She was willing to take out this Ju Chai as a gift after suffering at Shui's house. Before thinking about it, she liked this jewelry the most. Feng's heart was broken when she said this, she wiped the corners of her eyes with a handkerchief, the Xie family has raised her for so many years, she is a wolf-hearted thing, and her mother has a little dowry, and she thinks about it all day long, and even makes a fuss outside go, I don't think I'll lose the Xie family's face. Nurse Yu also felt angry, young lady is really confused. That's not it. Fong urged, choose a few more things, I can't let the Shui family take this anger out on my sister Qin. This day is too slow, and only one day has passed. When the time comes, she will ask Mrs. Xiao to bring sister Qin back. The Shui family's mother and daughter are like wolves, tigers and leopards. Shui Shipong is unreliable. We'll eat her sister Qin. Just after noon, Shui Wanqing straightened up from the ground. In less than a day and a night, the rosiness on Shui Wanqing's face had faded away. The bleak autumn wind in the afternoon blew in through the dilapidated window, and she suddenly felt a chill all over her body. The door of the ancestral hall was pushed open from the outside, Shui Wanqing turned her head quickly, the light from outside penetrated in, her eyes were pierced so that she couldn't see clearly, before she had time to see the person clearly, her face was severely slapped slapped. During the new book period, ask for tickets, please collect. The ticket will expire if you hold it in your hands. Xiao Sun. Today is another day when I have nothing to do, and I haven't even seen my daughter. In. Law. Tianqin Meigu. Let the cuties build you a magpie bridge with tickets, let's meet on the magpie bridge. End of this chapter. Chapter 35. Unwilling you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 35 Unwilling, Shui Wanqing, you are shameless, you actually stole Mrs. Chui's dowry and gave it to me, making me ashamed. Shui Wanchuang cried in anger. Shui Wanqing stood up, she looked at the girl in front of her, she had never been slapped before, this was the first time. If it wasn't for the fact that Ponzi is so powerful, Shui Wan would have returned the slap early in the morning. It is only now that she realizes how powerful a woman with a pen in her hand is, and there is clearly an army of women in her hand. No wonder, Jia Baoyu would say that married women are dead fish. Eyed, those mothers. In. Law and daughter. In. Law are all vicious, looking like they want to eat people. Shui Wanqing is also very scared. 
she was afraid of dying in the hands of Ponzi. If Ponzi reported her sudden death, no one would know about her unjust death. Feudal ethics is a system of cannibalism, which is also true. What, the emperor breaks the law is the same crime as the common people, is bullshit. The Sodot called law is a tool used to protect the ruling class. However, this is also good, one day, she will stand at the top of this pyramid, overlooking all living beings, so that those who have bullied her and suppressed her today will all kneel down and beg her for mercy. Second sister, what happened? Shui Wanqin asked calmly, covering her burning face, hiding the hatred and killing intent in her eyes. You still have the nerve to ask me what happened. Let me ask you, where did the three flowers made by the red jade you gave me come from? My grandmother gave it to me. Your grandmother. Shui Wanchuang laughed angrily. She had believed what Xia Jiwei said a long time ago, and believed that it must be Feng who had ignorant of Chui's dowry, and had the audacity to give Chui's dowry to Shui Wanqing. In order to please herself, Shui Wanqing gave the vermilion flower to herself, making herself ashamed in front of the noble ladies all over the capital. She had inquired about it, and there were quite a few ladies and ladies who bought jewelry in Jutsue Pavilion that day. Are you so stupid? Others don't know, don't you yourself know how much your grandmother has? Ha, huh, who doesn't know that the Yongchang uncle's mansion is so poor that they are used as sacrificial vessels? When your grandmother married to Xie's family, the dowry, Emma, dot you are so shabby that you don't even have eyes to look at, that vermilion flower is something your grandmother can get out of it. Shameless, taking the dowry from your daughter dot in dot law, this kind of thing is only done by your grandmother. Shui Wanqing didn't think it was a big deal. It was also said in Pearl in the Palm that Feng took over Chui's dowry and gave half of it to Shui Wanqing as a dowry. She just didn't know that the vermilion flower was actually part of the dowry. Since ancient times, the capable have lived there, and Xie Jiwei couldn't keep Chui's dowry, so who can be blamed? Shui Wanchuang became angrier as she spoke, it's okay to embarrass yourself, but you actually involved me. Thinking of this matter, I don't know how it was spread outside. Some people will definitely say that she has shallow eyelids and helped Shui Wan clear the accounts. The Shui family is also poor, so they have no money. She wears other people's mother's dowry, Shui Wanchuang tears they all came out, raised their hands, and slapped Shui Wanqing the left cheek. Only then did they feel relieved, lifted their skirts, turned and ran out. I really don't want to stay under the same roof with Shui Wanqing for a moment. Seeing Shui Wanchuang's back disappearing at the door, Shui Wanqing's eyes gradually turned cold, and her voice seemed to come out of hell, Sui Xiang, tell me, she is also a motherless child, why is the eldest cousin so lucky? Xie Jiwei has a good stepmother, and her grandmother is so kind to her. The entire Xie family treats her like a treasure, but what about her? Shui Wanqing covered her face, she had nothing, but soon, she would have everything. Sui Xiang trembled all over, and quickly glanced at her own girl, seeing that her face was covered by a shadow, and she smiled very strangely. Sui Xiang, go see my father and say, I can help him find a real job, so that the Shui family can re-enter the circle of power. Sui Xiang was thinking, is her girl crazy? What if the elder doesn't believe it? Sui Xiang herself didn't believe it either. The elder is Shui Xipang, Shui Wanqing's father. The title of Uncle Ning Yuan's mansion will last for three generations, and whether it can be passed on to Shui Xipang depends entirely on the emperor's mood. If he doesn't believe it, then the fate of the Shui family will be over, and I can't help it. Shui Wanqing slightly raised the corners of her lips, revealing a compassionate smile. She is not a god, even a can't control a person's will, let alone her. If it weren't for this feudal world, where a woman obeys her father at home, what does it matter to her whether the Shui family lives or dies? No matter how good the Xie family is, she has seen through it this time. Although the Feng family loves her, her surname is not Xie after all. Since she wants to fight Xie Jiwei, she must not rely on the Xie family. 
The Xie family is not her home field, and the battlefield between them is in the court. Xie Jiwei, since you can't tolerate me, of course I can't tolerate you either, God, if you give birth to Xue, why should you give birth to Xie? Xue Shipong has a total of eight concubines. Xue Wanqing's biological mother, Mrs. Xie, said she died of illness, but she was actually mad at Xue Shipong. Before she died, she set fire to the yard where she lived. In the blaze that soared into the sky, she hanged herself on the roof beam. Before he died, with his eyes open, he seemed to be accusing Xue Shipong, his appearance was extremely frightening. After Mrs. Xie's death, Xue Shipong was so frightened that he didn't close his eyes for several nights. He hated Mrs. Xie to death, and told his cronies that he would never marry a girl from Xie's family if he was a bachelor for the rest of his life. Fortunately, the Xie family had only one daughter, Xie Shi, in the previous generation. Xue Shipong was drunk and came back from the outside. His third concubine got the news and stood guard in front of the Chuehua door. As soon as Xue Shipong entered the door, she pulled him back to the room. Pangzi is different from Xie. After Pangzi gave birth to a son and a daughter, he didn't care much about Xue Shipong, and he didn't care whose house he slept in at night. Pang's methods are extremely clever. For so many years, Xue Shipong, together with Xue Wanqing, has only three concubines, and he didn't let these concubines lay quail eggs. You, you, who are you? Xue Shipong was drunk, looking at Sui Xiang's face, he squinted for a long time but didn't recognize who it was. Master, whoever she is, I've been waiting for you for a long time, go back to the room with me. There, I got a good thing, and I'm waiting to give it to you. Look at it, okay, seeing that Xue Shipong was about to be dragged away by the concubine, Tsui Xiang also became anxious, my lord, the servant is in front of the eldest girl, and the eldest girl ordered the servant to spread the word, saying that the eldest girl has got news and can help the elder lord lack. Really missing. Xue Shipong woke up with a jolt and looked at Tsui Xiang again, it seemed that there was no such person in the family, you just said big girl, which big girl? Big girl, the big girl who has been raised by Xie's family. Tsui Xiang couldn't help feeling sad for her own girl, her own father couldn't even remember the big girl coming. If Xue Wanchuang said this, Xue Shipong would not believe it. Who would say it was Xue Wanqing? His eldest daughter has been raised in the Xie family. Although the Xie family is very annoying, but the Xie family is really capable. The four families of Xie, Chui, Hai, and Lu used to be afraid of even the emperor. Who made these four families marry each other, and they are connected with each other, and they are almost in the same vein. Let's go, where is the eldest girl? Take me there. Xue Shipong still knew the importance, pushed the third concubine away, walked crookedly, and walked towards the ancestral hall under the leadership of Tsui Xiang. The first update. End of this chapter. Chapter 36. Lu Yen you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 36 Lu Yen in three days, that person will come back from other places, and he will be poisoned by hook kisses. If his father can save that person temporarily, that person will definitely remember it. As long as he falls into the eyes of that person, the Shue family will still worry recovery. If that person speaks in front of the emperor, the title of Uncle Ningyuan's mansion can be continued for another generation. And now that I have become the daughter of the Bofu, wouldn't my status be higher than it is now? Xie Jiwei was able to thrive in the Xie family, but she, Xue Wanqing, once stood at the end of the long river of time, had seen the most brilliant civilization and technology, received modern higher education, how could she still lose to Xie Jiwei? One day, she will watch Xie Jiwei become a prisoner, and see the Xie family and Xue family perish in her hands. Father. Seeing Xue Shipong approaching, Xue Wanqing hurriedly went up to salute Xue Shipong. The etiquette will be waived, I know you have learned well in the Xie family, but our Ningyu and uncle's mansion will not be honored soon, what do we need so many etiquette? Xue Shi slammed down on the chair and sat down. 
I turned my head towards the tablets facing due north, and I don't know what I was thinking. Father, as long as I'm here, the title of Uncle Ningyuan's mansion will not be broken. As long as father will definitely listen to me, soon, father will be the eldest son of the uncle's mansion. Shui Wanqing also sat down beside her, holding a glass of wine in her hand. Cold tea, no intention of drinking, just turning around like this. Oh, tell me, what can you do? Shui Wanqing raised her eyebrows and glanced at Shui Shipang, if I help my father, how will my father treat me? You are my daughter, and I gave you your life. Seeing the half-dot smile in Shui Wanqing's eyes, Shui Shipang swallowed what he was about to say, and quickly turned a corner, I haven't treated you enough. Okay. It seems that her father is not too stupid, so good. Shui Wanqing sneered, Father, where am I now? Shui Shipang understood, who made you kneel in the ancestral hall, I had a dispute with the eldest cousin of the Xie family. My grandmother sent me back to the Shui family, and the eldest wife asked me to kneel in the ancestral hall. Shui Wanqing also knew that she did not have the strength to fight against the imperial power. She knelt for three days in the ancestral hall. Those who passed Ming Road there can only suffer this loss by themselves, I will kneel in the ancestral hall for three days in peace, but there will be no next time. Of course, you are my daughter, and no one can punish you except me. Chinger, when you come back this time, why don't you go back to Xie's house? Thank you, father. Shui Wanqing got up and blessed Fushin perfunctorily, if I help father become the eldest son, father must protect me and not allow others to bully me. This is the first step, and she will only make this request for the time being. When her father really became the eldest son, it would be her father's turn to beg her in the future. At that time, she would be considered truly important. Shui Wanqing understands the truth of taking a long line to catch big fish. As long as your father is here, no one will bully you in this family. Back then, I objected to you going to Xie's house. Look, father's concerns are not unreasonable, right? If you have a conflict with the girl of Xie's family, Xie's family will only the girl who will protect the Xie family, who will take you seriously. In our family, it is your grandmother who has the final say, you usually go to curry favor with your grandma, you are so smart, your grandma will like you. Shui Wanqing is not worried about this, as long as she inherits the title to her father, is she afraid that her grandmother will not confess her. Father, do you know Lu Yen? Shui Shipang swallowed hard, and he stared at Shui Wanqing in shock, you, you, do you know Master Lu? Among the servants in the whole palace, only the Palm Seal envoy Lu Yen, the inner minister, was honored as master like those foreign ministers. Even his predecessor and godfather, Lu Huizhong, did not have this honor. Many courts up and down, mentioning Lu Yen, no one is not frightened and terrified. I don't know Mr. Lu, but I figured out that Mr. Lu had a catastrophe recently. If my father can save Mr. Lu's life, would my father still worry about the title of Uncle Ning Yuan? This is true. Lu Yen became a at the age of 14. He is unparalleled in intelligence, with a handwriting that is second to none. This year, he is only 17 years old, but he has reached a higher level and has become the youngest with palm prints in the Yong dynasty ever. For him, the emperor changed the position of eunuch of ritual superintendent to palm seal envoy, and ordered Lu Yen to take both the posts of critique and seal, to supervise the East Factory, which can be said to be extremely trustworthy. If you can get a word from Lu Yen, let alone Qingjue, it is possible for Ning Yuan Bo's mansion to become Ning Yuan Ho's mansion. Shui Shipang only felt that after 30 years of his life, it was time for him to turn around. Good daughter, are you hungry? What do you want to eat? Father asked the kitchen to cook for you. Father, I want to eat Bai Wei soup, fried quail, chicken and turtle fish, steamed soft sheep, pan rabbit, milk cooked sheep. Shui Wanqin reported the names of a dozen dishes in one breath, and Shui Shipang's eyes widened when he heard it. He was about to object, and seeing his daughter looking at him meaningfully, he quickly woke up and slapped his thigh, Father, let the kitchen cook it for you. 
In Pang's main courtyard, Shui Wanshuang was crying in her mother's arms, my daughter doesn't want to live anymore, why does my daughter have the face to go out? Wu Wu, mother, you must vent your anger on me. Pang's teeth itch with hatred. She said that she was raised in Xie's family so much. How can she be raised by people with shallow eyes like Fang's? Don't worry, I won't just let this matter go. Mother will definitely give you justice. Just as she was talking, Madam Yen, who was next to Pang, came in. She waved away everyone in the room, and then said, Mrs. I went to the kitchen and ordered the kitchen to cook more than ten kinds of delicious dishes, saying that the eldest girl has been wronged in the ancestral hall these days, and I want to make up for the eldest girl. Shui Wanshuang was so stunned, she forgot to cry. It took a long time for Pang Zi to wake up. She looked outside and saw the afterglow of the setting sun shining in the courtyard. The sun had not completely set, and she had not fallen asleep. This should not be in a dream. What did you say? Nurse Yen pondered for a moment, she also found it unbelievable, if she hadn't heard it with her own ears or seen it with her own eyes, she herself would not have believed it. The servant just came from the kitchen, and the kitchen has indeed received the words of the old man, and is preparing. As she said that, Mammy Yen reported the names of the dishes one by one. Pang laughed angrily, chicken turtle fish, steamed soft sheep, pan rabbit. What a big tone, the old lady is still alive, is she going to the old lady off? The Shui family still has money to eat these. My lord are you dizzy? Mother, look at big sister, she doesn't take mother seriously. Pang patted his daughter, be safe and don't be impatient, let's see what she wants to do. Today, the elder master personally went to the kitchen to give orders, and she must not rashly go to object, as this will upset the elder master, and the old lady will also be unhappy. Only by knowing the ins and outs of the matter can we deal with it and hit it with one blow. Xiao Sun I didn't even show up, so why can Lu Yen make an appearance? Lu Yen Compete, whoever can get the votes will be the hero, okay? Xiao Sun. Dissatisfied. End of this chapter. Chapter 37. House Rules You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 37 Family Rules Nurse Yu received Feng's order, and before she could leave the door, she saw the old man coming in with his hands behind his back. Xie Jiwei was by the old man's side, and said with a smile, Grandfather, is the medicinal recipe prepared by my granddaughter safe? Xie Tiao liked this granddaughter more and more. He stroked his beard and nodded, well, I took the medicinal diet prescription you prescribed to the imperial doctor to see it early this morning. Can you let him open it to the emperor? Xie Jiwei didn't expect that there would be such an effect, which is really a good thing, she shook her head, grandfather, the medicinal recipe was specially prescribed by the granddaughter for the grandfather's body, although it may have a certain effect on the emperor's body but if if you want the greatest effect, your granddaughter needs to have a pulse diagnosis for the emperor. Presumably, the herbal diet recipe does have a conditioning effect on the emperor's body, but it is related to the dragon's body. Grandpa is not too old to agree. Xie Jiwei knew that his grandfather had always acted very cautiously, so he was not worried, but he still wanted to say more good things, so he praised sincerely, ginger is still old and spicy. Xie Jiwei flattered her without any bottom line, and Xie Tiao laughed happily. The two saw Nanny Yu at the same time. Nurse Yu had to withdraw her foot that was about to hide aside, and came forward to say hello. Xie Ji smiled and said, What's wrong with Madame Yu? If you see me and Grandpa, hide away. Is there something that Grandma can't know? Xie Tiao's face sank all of a sudden and his majestic eyes pressed down on Nanny Yu. Nurse Yu smiled coyly, back to the elder girl, the servant is happy to see the elder girl chatting and laughing with the old man, and is afraid that the slave servant will offend the elder girl with his stupid appearance. I didn't see you three or two times a day, and I didn't say I couldn't eat. Look at the clothes that Mammy changed to go out. Where are you going? Mammy Yu knew something was wrong, she just knew she couldn't admit it, this gown is newly made, 
I put it on today, and I happen to meet the eldest girl. It's getting late, and the slaves have to serve the old lady, so there's no need errands to go out. Nurse Yu shrank her neck, not even daring to lift her head. Xie Jiwei sneered, and looked at Song Shifu's family who followed behind her. The daughter dot in dot law was carrying a small dot leaf red sandalwood suitcase in her hand. She was already trembling, her legs were weak, but Xie Ji smiled and asked, Mother Song, it's so late, who are you delivering food to? Our family never wants to deliver food. Where are the people who eat? Xie Jiwei winked at ZMO, and ZMO hurried forward to get the suitcase from Song Shifu's family, but Song Shifu's family was willing to give it to him, holding his hands in his arms, and would not let go of anything. The two of you tugged at each other, ZMO used all her strength, she was about to it, but she let go suddenly, Song Shifu's family used too much force, and the force was too strong, she fell to the ground on her back, carrying the box scattered all over the place. A burst of jewels flashed out, and I saw that the suitcase originally used to hold dishes, cups and plates was filled with all kinds of gold and silver jewelry, among which a few Shoshan stones were particularly eye-dot-catching, rolled to the ground, and several pieces were missing. Hey, isn't this red jade something in the wife's dowry list? And this Shoshan stone, old man, girl, is it possible that these two are going to exchange the wife's dowry for money? ZMO quickly picked it up. Pass the Shoshan stone to Xia Jiwei, girl, please look. Xia Jiwei looked at the old man, but said nothing. She is well aware of the truth that too many words are bound to be lost. Her grandfather was young and full of favoritism. He was long and sensitive. He had been an official for many years. It is known that autumn arrives. That the old man glanced at Xia Jiwei and saw that the granddaughter lowered her head. Although she knew that she had done something she shouldn't have done, she didn't shrink back and look out of place. Instead, she was open and generous, and she didn't feel so angry. It's getting late, go back and rest first. Xie Tiao waved his hand, and walked to the jewels all over the floor, full of anger. Yes. Xie Jiwei blessed his body, and led ZMO away. Come here, let me suppress these two slaves who are guarding themselves and stealing themselves, and beat them fifty times. Xie Jiwei's pace quickened a bit, she was very worried, today, she found out that Mrs. Fong was going to take some jade from her mother as a gift to Xue's family, so she deliberately said that she would accompany her grandfather for two steps, just now it happened that she took her grandfather I met Nanny Yu. She has been plotting against her grandfather twice in a row. But other than that, there is no other way. She wanted to take back her mother's dowry no matter what. It was her mother's relic. If it fell into the hands of Feng Shi and Shui Wanqing, she was afraid that her mother's spirit in heaven would be disturbed. It would be great if grandfather could understand, but if she couldn't understand, she had no choice but to step on the lintel of Xie's family to achieve this. No matter how many things Xie Tiao has encountered in these years, nothing has ever made him so angry. It's Chui's dowry again. Is his old wife getting more confused with age? The lintel of the Xie family will be defiled by her. In the Chunhui Hall, Mrs. Feng was waiting anxiously. Thinking of the various abuses Xue Wanqing might suffer in Xue's house, Mrs. Feng hated Xie Jiwei to death, but at the same time wished she could go to Xue's house in person and accompany Xue Wanqing to kneel down. After the ancestral hall, bring Xue Wanqing back. The old man is here. The maid who opened the curtain said outside, and Feng got up in shock. Xie Tiao has already strode in. He is wearing a stone blue Taoist robe, with a silk belt of the same color around his waist, and a gourd dot shaped purse hanging on the side. While walking, I was interpreting the seven words, there is a poem and book spirit in the belly. Back then, Mrs. Feng was stunned by Xie Tiao's stare like this. Time didn't seem to leave any traces on this man, but it only polished him to become more gentle and elegant. Xie Tiao raised his eyelids, the light in his eyes was like an arrow, hitting Feng Shi's heart directly, Feng Shi only felt a pain in his heart, 
he covered his chest, and even had difficulty breathing. Xie Tiao sat down on Luo Han's bed, and the maids in the room quickly served him a cup of tea. Xie Tiao slowly picked up the red ground and white bamboo terrine, and gently stirred the tea leaves with the hood. Take a sip. Aman, don't you have enough money at home? Fong took a deep breath. Over the years, she has presided over Zhongfu, and she dared not touch the Xie family's money. Even if she was worried every day that Xie's family would still have stepson to inherit in the future, she would not dare to touch the share of Zhongfu in the mansion. Enough. Feng's voice was hoarse. How was the dowry that the Feng family gave her as a dowry? How could she afford to be the mistress of the Xie family with such a little worth? Hearing that Lu's dowry was comparable to Chui's, she felt even more ashamed. For so many years, she has become accustomed to using Chui's dowry to make up for some shortfalls. Using Chui's dowry to make money, asking her to let her out is simply more uncomfortable than killing her. Just enough. Feng Shi was trembling all over, she turned around with difficulty, and smiled at Xie Tiao, old master. Xie Tiao didn't wait for her to speak, you have been in Xie's house for more than twenty years, right? You should know the rules of Xie's family, Xie's family, we don't have old people on our heads now, but Chui's family still has uncle, the unworthy descendants of the Xie family and the elders of the other three families can help teach them a lesson. Yes, old man, I know. Feng Shi closed her eyes, no matter what, she was not reconciled. She was moved when she first saw this man. Nurse Yu and Mother Song are old people who have been with my concubine for many years. The old man, in view of my concubine's lack of credit and hard work for the Xia family these years, I beg the old man to forgive her this time. Speaking of which, both of them recited it for Feng himself. The state owns the state law, and the family has family rules. If you want me to spare them and use the daughter in laws dowry, it will fall on your head. Just wait and see, do I dare to divorce you? Xie Tiao General the red ground and white bamboo gaiwen was lightly placed on the table, and he raised his eyebrows and glanced at Feng Shi. Feng Shi only felt that the blood in his whole body was congealed. The Xie family has never embezzled the mother in law of the daughter in laws dowry. Ask for votes. Feng Shi. For Piao Piao, I am willing to be divorced by you. End of this chapter. Chapter 38. Boudoir School You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 38 Boudoir Learning the night before, Xiao Shi sent someone to say that starting from today, Boudoir School will start again. Mr. Lin, the female wife who went home to visit her relatives, is back. Since Xie Jiwei was reborn, this is the first time she went to boudoir school. Last night, Xie Jiwei checked the homework assigned by his master before the holiday, and found nothing wrong before going to bed with peace of mind. Xie Jiwei woke up half an hour early. After getting up and washing up, she went to Fuyin Courtyard. Her younger brother was already waiting. The siblings had breakfast together, so Xie Jiwei assigned his younger brother today's homework. You memorize the passage that my sister taught you yesterday, understand the meaning of the words clearly, and then write ten temporary posts, and I will check them when I come back. Oh, I got it. Xie Mingxi drooped his head, her sister was going to go to boudoir school today, so she couldn't study with him. If you memorize it well, you can explain the meaning of the words clearly, and you can write the words well, and you will be rewarded. Xie Jiwei rubbed the top of his younger brother's hair, and the little guy suddenly regained his energy. What reward is there? Of course it's the scented tea I scented myself, do you want to drink it? Think. Well, after you finish your homework, I will allow you to pick some edible chrysanthemums for me. When I come back from class, I will teach you how to make scented tea, how about it? What a meaningful activity this is. I was able to be a little helper for my sister. Xie Mingxi was very excited and promised again and again, I will definitely study hard. After Xie Jiwei left, Mrs. Yuan came back from the listening hall, and saw Xie Mingxi lying on the table, 
seriously writing the post, sitting upright, holding the pen in a good looking posture, and writing very seriously. After finishing one piece, Yuan Shi took it over and saw that every stroke was neat and tidy. She was very surprised, brother Shi is so motivated. Seeing this, Grandma Tian also thought it was funny, and waited for Yuan Shi to come out, and said in a low voice, Miss said, this copybook was written by the old man of the Chui family for her to enlighten her. All right, in the future, the eldest girl will ask the old man to let the fifth young master to study in the Chui family's family school. Mei Meijin said that. Yuan Shi was shocked. The Chui family's family education is well dot known, because every time someone participates in the spring festival, they will be named on the apricot list, and no one will fail in a hundred years. Eldest wife, why worry about it? There is no way out. The fifth young master is the younger brother of the elder girl. Compared with the second and third bedrooms, they are always closer. That's right. The eldest girl has always been very smart. She sees the truth better than anyone else. Yuan Shi suddenly remembered that the banknotes given to Xie Jiwei seemed to be a little less yesterday, and she said, Tell me, what should I do? What should I give Mei Mei? Although Mei Mei should be nice to Brother Xi, how can there be so many in the world? Eldest lady, according to the servant girl's cold eyes, the eldest girl must be planning for something. If the servant girl is not mistaken, the eldest girl should want to get the dowry of the first eldest lady. The girl has no background in her hand, and she can buy anything. With your hands and feet bound, you don't want to be like a servant, the eldest wife will pick a shop in the capital and give it to the girl, and the girl will not be short of money for everything she buys. These words touched Yuan's heart, and she also thought it was very good, so she asked Madame Tian to bring her shop list and weighed it up and down. She wanted the location to be good enough to bring in money, and the shop was not too big to avoid taking it out too much. In a nutshell, Mimi doesn't want it, and it has to be not far from home. Mimi can visit it from time to time. The most important thing is that her daughter's family can take care of the business. This is quite difficult. After picking and choosing, they chose a Qingla tea house. Yuan Shi asked, the store has a small appearance, and the income is about 100 taels a month, not too much and not too little. I can also make up for it on weekdays, old John. The head father and son are dutiful, and I can keep an eye on the purchase channels. Mei Mei is so smart and knows a lot about tea. The Chui family has planted thousands of acres of tea in the south. This shop, look, for how is Mei Mei. Nurse Tian took a look, let's see what the eldest girl has to say. That's right. When she comes back later, I'll find a chance to talk to her. Yuan Shi began to worry again, and didn't know how to talk to Xie Ji Wei. What if she felt that she had something in mind? Xie Ji Wei didn't know that she would soon be earning money again. She walked through the alley and walked to the back of the main hall, where she met Xie Ji Wei, and the two went to the boudoir school together. The boudoir school is located in Kongovtang, north of Chunhui Hall. The reason why such a place was chosen was to be close to Shui Wanqing and prevent her from walking too much. As a result, the girls living in the few rooms on Xiejia East Road had to travel a long way. The coldness of spring, the heat of summer, the bleak autumn wind, and the heavy snow in winter are all unavoidable hardships. Pass through the main hall and enter through the door on the east side of the small garden, and you will see a powder wall, one from the plantain, one piece of pruning bamboo, and several houses are hidden in it. Two bright and one dark, spacious and bright, with tables, chairs and benches inside, and the smell of books and ink on the face. Xie Jiwei has not been here for more than ten years, and this is also the place where she stayed most when she was a child in her previous life, where she read, practiced calligraphy, played the piano, and learned to paint. The daughters of the Xie family have to go to boudoir school when they reach the age of six, and most of them are hired by female masters to teach piano, chess, calligraphy and painting. 
They have to accept the old master's exam every ten days like men, and they will be punished if they don't learn well. Xie Jiwei always sits in the middle of the first row, and Xie Jiqian sits by the window on her left. Xie Jiqian wore a pair of pink dot bottomed magnolia sparrow brocade trousers, her crow dot blue hair was pulled up, and she wore a golden ginkgo pearl flower, which looked delicate and bright. While talking to Xie Jiying, Xie Jiqian kept glancing towards Xie Jiwei and the two of them. Big sister, the pears in the back are very ripe, why don't you go and have a look at the back? The fourth sister and I picked two pears just now. They taste sweet and delicious, and the juice is flowing. Xie Jiqian said. Big sister, let's go. Xie Jiwei heard that the pears in the backyard were ripe, and she liked pears the most, so she hurriedly pulled Xie Jiwei to pick them, big sister, this season, autumn pears stewed with rock sugar to nourish the lungs and nourish the yin are best. It couldn't be better, dot Xie Jiwei thought about her younger brother's illness, and she really wanted to give him a nourishing prescription, but she forgot that there were two pear trees planted in the backyard of Konglovtang. The person who planted the pear trees probably only wanted to enjoy the flowers, but unexpectedly, time flies, and now the fruit of the pear tree can shade future generations. There was still a quarter of an hour before class began. The two sisters asked the maid to put down the bookcase, and went to the backyard to pick pears hand in hand. The accompanying maids hurriedly brought small baskets. The pear tree is about the height of a person, with more than a dozen branches sticking out, and the huge juicy golden pears are densely bending the branches. Xie Jiwei was overjoyed, rushed forward, raised her hand and grabbed the biggest pear, picked it lightly, the pedicle separated from the trunk, and the heavy pear fell into her hand. Xie Jiwei picked five pears. Xie Jiwei liked to eat pears, so she picked a dozen or so in one go, and ordered the maids to send all the pears they picked back to the yard. Big sister, have you finished all the homework assigned by your husband? On the way back to school, Xie Jiwei remembered and asked. Yes, how about you? It's finished. I've already finished writing 300 large characters. You on sure? I used my dowry to reward the author's mother. Where are your tickets? It will be rancid if you hold it. End of this chapter. Chapter 39 Calligraphy and Painting You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 39 Painting and Calligraphy Sia's family rules, maids and servants are not allowed to enter the school, so every morning, after the maids put the bookcase on the table, they hurried out, not daring to stay in the school. Mr. Lin has already sat down at the table, and she is looking through a copybook, which should be a new one, and she is very focused on it. Mr. Lin is the female master who taught Miss Xie's calligraphy and painting, under the tutelage of her elder sister Lin Bicheng, who is a well-known female calligraphy and painting master in Daeong. When Lin Bicheng combed herself at the age of 16, she said that she married herself to calligraphy and painting. Since then, she has traveled all over the world. Wherever she goes, she will open up the copybooks in the Forest of Steels, study them with great concentration, and become a self-contained whole. When Lin Bicheng is mentioned, even Xie Tiao admires it too. Mr. Lin's handwriting has the character of his sister, especially her paintings are natural and smooth, with concise strokes and bright colors, especially figure paintings, with delicate lines and round strokes, and the clothes are floating like a breeze. The foundation is extremely deep. Seeing Xie Jiwei and Xie Jiwei coming in, the school suddenly fell silent, and all eyes fell on them. Xie Jiwei took out the pen, ink, paper and inkstone from the bookcase and the homework that Mr. Lin would check. Xie Jiwei was behind her, and only heard her, ah, even Mr. Lin was startled and looked at her. Xie Jiwei turned his head and saw Xie Jiwei's bookcase. For some reason, a cup of tea was spilled, and it was a mess. Xie Jiwei glanced around, and seeing Xie Jiqian's lips hooked, revealing a touch of color, she knew that Xie Jiwei's bookcase might have been tampered with. Xie Jiwei frowned. They are all sisters of the Xie family. 
As far as she knows, Xie Zhihui has never done anything to apologize to Xie Zhiqian. Why did she do this? After thinking about it for a while, Xie Zhihui also understood Xie Zhiqian's thoughts. Today is the first day of school, and it is also a holiday. Grandpa will definitely come to check for a while, mainly to see if the girls have taken care of Mr. Take the assigned homework to heart. Sure enough, there were footsteps outside the door. Seeing the old man coming, Mr. Lin quickly stood up and went forward to salute. The old man said politely, Mr. Lin, you are the teacher who teaches the girls of the Xie family. Please don't be too polite. I'll listen in. By the way, I'll also see if these students have completed the homework assigned by the master this month. Are you just being naughty in the boudoir? Of course, Mr. Lin didn't dare to refuse. After the two women came in, they put a chair in front of the north window. As usual, Xie Tiao sat down on the chair. Girls, take out all your homework and put it on the table. Mr. Lin didn't dare to waste the old lady's time. She walked to the first place by the window. Xie Zhiqian had already arranged her homework, a thick stack of copybooks and a few ink paintings. After flipping through them, Mr. Lin nodded and said, Third Miss the writing has improved, but the writing strength is slightly insufficient, and when the pen is closed, the force is too strong, which seems a bit deliberate. The fourth girl has made great progress this time, which is already very good. The big girl's handwriting has already achieved something, which is very good. This, dragonfly and bean pods, has clear lines, and the ink is well dot thin and light, and the artistic conception is good. When Xie Tiao heard about it, he gestured and asked his mother dot in dot law to show him Xie Jiwei's calligraphy and painting. Mr. Lin was already very upset. She saw a pile of water dot drenched paper on Xie Jiwei's desk. The paper could no longer see its original appearance, so she couldn't help asking sharply, Second Miss, what's going on? Xie Jiqian turned her head and glanced this way, and said in a charming voice, Second Sister, did you really not do your homework? I reminded you the day before yesterday that my husband is coming back, and the boudoir school will start soon. My sister went out to play together, but you didn't listen. As soon as Mr. Lin heard this, he understood what was going on, and she couldn't help being very disappointed, second girl, the homework I assigned, writing ten characters a day, and painting a picture every six days, is already very little. If you have the heart, you can do it every day insist on writing, the amount of this task is not big at all, not only did you not complete it seriously, but you also want to get away with it in this way. The so dot called method is to deliberately pour tea soup on the paper, pretending that the words and paintings were destroyed, trying to lie to the husband that the homework has been done, but it was accidentally destroyed. Xie Jiwei's tears were about to fall, she obviously wrote it seriously, and she wrote every stroke very seriously, hoping that one day she could catch up with her big sister a little bit. When she got up early, she even counted it again. Every word and drawing was in good condition. How could it become like this? Xie Jiwei lowered her head and twisted her handkerchief. She really wanted to say that she had done it seriously, but seeing this scene, her character did not allow her to say anything that could not be proved. Mr. Lin, the second sister's calligraphy and paintings were all done carefully, but they were accidentally stained. Xie Jiwei couldn't help but said. Mr. Lin turned around and looked at Xie Jiwei, Miss, did you see that the second girl wrote it with your own eyes? You also saw her paint the painting with your own eyes. Xie Jiwei glanced at Xie Jiwei, and only then did she understand why Xie Jiwei was unwilling to defend herself with a single word. Eldest sister, you are good at writing and painting. We can't catch up with you. Second sister has always said that you are very good. If second sister always wants to play with you, second sister will definitely be able to finish her homework well. The corners of Xie Zhiqian's lips curled up slightly, and there was unconcealable joy in her eyes. Her plan succeeded, not only made Xie Zhihui suffer, but also dragged Xie Zhihui into the water. Grandfather disliked people with bad conduct the most, 
and this happened to show him how insidious and cunning Big Sister is. Study secretly by myself, dragging my younger sisters to play, trying to ruin their studies. Xie Tiao put Xie Jiwei's calligraphy and paintings on the table, he stood up and walked over, glanced at Xie Jiwei's table, and asked, what's going on? Xie Jiwei couldn't argue with everything. If she defended herself, she couldn't produce any evidence. Even if she did, she couldn't protect herself by herself, and she would appear cowardly and incompetent in front of her grandfather. Xie Jiwei knew this truth very well. After taking a deep look at Xie Jiqian, she said, Mr. Lin, the students want to ask for advice. What is the purpose of asking students to write ten words a day? Mr. Lin didn't expect Xie Jiwei to ask such a question, he was a little curious, of course it is to improve your writing. One month, three hundred words, if you write seriously, you will definitely make great progress. I have a way to prove that the second sister has indeed written seriously in the past month. Oh, so how do you prove that? Xie Jiwei beckoned the women to come over, cleaned up the mess on the table, and then put his own set of pen, ink, paper and inkstone on Xie Jiwei's table, and said, Second sister, what words did Mr. Lin arrange this time? Since you you have written it carefully, you should remember, as long as you write it out word by word, it can prove that you have indeed written it seriously. Xie Jiwei's eyes lit up, she looked at Xie Jiwei with burning eyes, and with a slight smile, she knew that her eldest sister was smarter than her, and no one could put her in a situation where she was helpless. Xie Jiwei hurriedly picked up a brush, dipped ink on the ink stone, smoothed the Qingxin paper with one hand, took a deep breath, calmed down, and began to fall silent. Xiao Sun. Today is another day without me, where are your votes? Vote out and help me build a magpie bridge so that I can meet Mei Mei. End of this chapter. Chapter 40. Anxiety You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 40 Uneasy These words were indeed written by Xie Jiehui many times. She is very proficient, and she is also very skilled in handling pens. She is meticulous in every stroke. Anyone with a discerning eye can see at a glance that she has a well dot thought dot out plan for these words and has made great progress. Mr. Lin asked the girls of Xie's family to write ten sheets a day, and each sheet only wrote one word, that is to say, they only wrote ten words a day, and three hundred words in thirty days. Xie Jiehui wrote a few words, people are as if they are in a trance, and they can't feel the existence of people around them. Her handwriting is strong and powerful, and it is as strong as her character. It is upright and upright, like a silver hook and iron painting. After writing a piece of paper, Xie Jiehui was about to spread the paper and continue, but Mr. Lin raised his hand and shouted to stop, Second girl, you don't need to write, I already believe you. But when I wronged you just now, why didn't you defend yourself? Xie Jiehui glanced at her grandfather, pursed her lips, no matter what the reason, I couldn't get my homework out, and I just couldn't get it out. My husband believed that it was my husband's fault. If I didn't get my homework out, it was my fault. If I made a mistake, it was my fault. Well, there's nothing to argue about. Sister Wei, what do you say? Xie Tiao saw Xie Jiwei's bright eyes and asked. Grandfather, granddaughter thinks that the second sister is right. However, when faced with conspiracies and tricks, if we blindly face them directly and don't know how to dodge and fight back, putting ourselves in a dangerous situation is not advisable. Gentlemen, be a mud if you don't dye it, you should also know how to use it. Mr. Lin looked at Xie Jiwei thoughtfully. It is surprising that at such a young age, he has so much insight into the world. Xie Tiao nodded, and said to Xie Jiwei, do you understand what your big sister said? Granddaughter understands. Xie Jiwei replied tearfully, wiping away tears after all, being young. Xie Tiao did not criticize Xie Jiwei anymore, but instead said, you are upright and like me, there is nothing wrong with that, but you must also remember what your big sister said, and it is not advisable to let yourself fall into a passive situation for no reason. 
This is also a compliment to Xie Zhihui. Xie Zhihui smiled with tears in her eyes and saluted Xie Zhihui. Thank you, big sister. Second sister, you don't have to be polite. You and I are sisters in the same mansion. We are connected by blood. We should help each other, but we shouldn't help each other in the mansion. Because they are also dealing with sisters from Ifu. Xie Jiwei took a deep look at Xie Jiqian with a cold expression. Xie Jiqian clenched her fists and looked at Xie Tiao vigilantly. Xie Tiao glanced at her indifferently and said a few words to Mr. Lin. It is nothing more than preaching and accepting karma to solve doubts. It must be strict to be effective. If the girls have something against them, they should tell themselves early. After Xie Tiao left, the classroom returned to the usual order. No one mentioned who was responsible for Xie Zhihui's calligraphy and painting, but Xie Zhihui knew that whether it was the old man or Mr. Lin, they wanted to know, and it was very easy to know, even himself. Yes, can they not know? Xie Zhihui has never cared about this younger sister. How can a fool like Qian raise good children? After the half-dot-day class, Xie Zhihui left with her elder sister. Xie Zhiqian went back to the third room alone with the maid, and seeing the two sisters walking in front, she wished she could pounce on them and tear them to pieces. It wasn't until get out of class was over that she realized that she was like a clown in the eyes of everyone. She took a lot of effort to pour a cup of tea into Xie Zhihui's bookcase, staining all her calligraphy and paintings, but she didn't expect that the ending would be like this. The maidly Lu was worried all the way, the old man knew what happened today, she would definitely not let it go, the wife and the girl would definitely push her out, what good consequences could she have? Girl, how will the old man punish the girl? Li Lu couldn't help asking. Xie Zhiqian said impatiently, how could grandfather know? Are you thinking too much? Every morning and evening, Xie Zhiqian followed the two sisters Xie Zhiwei and watched them enter Chunhui Hall, and she stepped in helplessly. In Chunhui Hall, people from all rooms arrived, but no one spoke, falling into a strange silence. All eyes fell on the three sisters, watching them salute unhurriedly and get up together. Say hello to grandma. Feng's eyes fell on Xie Zhiwei first, looking at her beautiful and youthful face, feeling depressed for a while. She stayed up all night last night, but seeing this step. Granddaughter, she slept soundly. How much benefit does the long house take? Back then, none of Lu's dowry was given out, and now it is still in the hands of the old man. I heard that all the proceeds have been saved, and not a single cent has been used. Chui's dowry, she only used a little bit of it, the old man wanted to eat her, and Xie Zhiwei calculated it so clearly at such a young age. BVEC Feng thought about it, she had to find an opportunity to let Xie Zhiwei know how good she is, and let her know how to write the words senior and inferior. But now, it is not the time. Miss Wei, you are ten years old. In the past year, you will be eleven years old. I am thinking that I should hand over some of the dowry left by your biological mother Chui You should learn to manage it yourself. You are a little girl, so I can't give you some farm shops and the like. You are young and don't know how to run a business, so I will give you some jewelry and fabrics to take care of. The rest will wait for you to grow up. And then slowly hand it over to you. Anyway, jewelry and the like, the Fong family can't blatantly use them. It's still a disaster to keep these dead things. Fong was lying on the Arhat's bed, smiling, holding a yellow teacup bowl in a green garden, with the other hand pinching the bowl lid and gently flicking the tea leaves inside, with slightly lowered eyes, looking leisurely and serene, as if talking about what the weather is like today. The others didn't think so, they were all shocked, no one expected that Fong would take the initiative to bring up the matter of Chui's dowry. Although there are not many officials in the Xie family in the court, Xie Tiao, as one of the nine ministers, is only a third-dot-rank official. It seems that, regardless of the inheritance of the Xie family, the Xie family is above the court and not well-dot-known in Beijing. 
However, all the women who married into the Xia family knew how rich the heritage of the Xia family had been for more than a hundred years. However, what is public is what is public. The Xia family advocated self-cultivation through tranquility and virtue through frugality. Therefore, the dowry for a daughter is very generous, and whether the son is married or lives at home, they all advocate the word thrifty. In recent years, Gongzhong has followed the old rules and kept thrifty. But in the old lady's house, Chunhui Hall is different. The corresponding food and clothing costs, highlighting the words expensive and prosperous. It can be seen from this that the old lady relies on Chui's dowry to live a luxurious life, not to mention subsidizing her children and grandchildren, and subsidizing her mother's family every year is quite a lot. Although everyone with a discerning eye sees it, they all know it tacitly and don't tell the truth. Xue Wanchuang, who wears the flower of Ruomu on her hair, was caught by Xia Jiwei in Jutsue Pavilion. Now, when the old lady took out these dead things in Chui's dowry, she must have thought that these dead things, needless to say, would cause a lot of embarrassment. Everyone's thoughts are endless, some are reluctant, some have nothing to do with themselves, and some are contemptuous and aggrieved. The old lady really knows how to plan, take out the dead things, hold those profitable properties in her hands, and no one knows how much she earns secretly. Even if you check the accounts, you can still say that the harvest is not good, and if you make a fake account, it is possible that Xie Jiwei will subsidize it in turn in the future. Feng Shi I am willing to spit out Chui Shi's dowry, and you boldly throw away your tickets too. End of this chapter